Here we are, section A5. Angle of elevation. You guys should answer the question real loud so they can hear. What's the angle of elevation? From the horizontal when you're looking up. What's the angle of depression? From the horizontal when you look down. See, you guys could teach this class. All right. Moving on now to example number one. Leah wants to see a castle in an amusement park. She sights the top of the castle at an angle of elevation of 38 degrees. So I have provided you with the picture already on this one. She knows that the castle happens to be 190 feet tall. A little hard to see that 190 there. We usually measure the height of something from the ground. You'll want to keep that in mind. If Leah happens to be 5.5 feet tall, so here's Leah over here. She's 5.5 feet tall, that tiny person standing there. How far is she from the castle to the nearest foot? It says make a sketch to represent the situation. Well, they already had a sketch drawn out. We'll be making some sketches later. So how far away from the castle are we? Now, we need to be a little careful on the fact that the right triangle, that is this top right triangle, has a side right here that is not 190. What is it? What do I need to do? Minus 5.5. The triangle that includes this 38 degree angle is not 190 feet tall. It is 190 minus 5.5 feet tall, which is how tall? 184.5. 184.5. So that is 184.5 this side of that triangle. She is wanting to know how far away she is. We'll call that X. So from the perspective of 38, what are the names of the two sides that I know and want to know? Opposite and adjacent. Opposite and adjacent. So which trig ratio? Tangent. So we will say the tangent of what? Of 38. The tangent of the angle. That's our perspective. Is going to equal what over what? 184.5 over x. So if I want to solve for x, I'm going to multiply by x to eliminate that fraction. Then we will divide by this to isolate the x. You got your calculators running. How far away is Leah from the castle? Thank you very much. I actually have Elaine right there picking up my voice. But I appreciate you reminding me because I forget things like that. All right. What, what's the answer here? 36.5. Point one, if we go to the nearest tenth. 236 point what? Okay. If we go to one decimal place, what would it be? Thank you. 236.1 feet approximately away from that castle. So look at another situation. We will draw the picture on this one. The crossbar of a goal post is 10 feet high. If a field goal attempt is made 25 yards from the base of the goal post that clears the goal by one foot, what is the smallest angle of elevation at which the ball could have been kicked to the nearest degree? So we have a goal post that is 10 feet high. It is right there. So here is, whoops, here is my 10 foot high goal post. Then the ball cleared it by how much? One foot. There's the ball coming right over that goal post. We kick the ball from a distance of what? 25 yards. Now, what do you think we need to do with that number 25? I need to change it to feet. So we'll multiply it by three and get 75 feet. So make sure you are in the same unit of measure when you do this. Otherwise, your answer won't come out so good. They want to know the smallest angle. I better talk about the whole symbol. The smallest angle of elevation that you could have kicked the foot, the football, for that to have happened. This is the Greek letter theta. It is a very common 
letter used to indicate angles. Once in a while, we might use this. Do you know what that letter is? Or maybe we will use this. Or maybe we will say, let's use this. Well, now you've seen them. So if you run across them in mathematics, you'll run across those symbols quite a bit. And you need to know, oh, that's theta. That's just a letter. It's like A, B, C, D. That's alpha, that's beta, that's gamma. So these are very common Greek letters that you will see in mathematics. So I'll use theta a lot. That's a very common one we would use for theta. So for an angle. So we're trying to figure out this angle. So what trig ratio? Opposite. We know the opposite. Adjacent. So what trig ratio? Tangent. Tangent. We're using tangent on this one. Tangent of what? Tangent of theta. 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 That thing. It equals. What does it equal? Eleven over seventy-five. So in order for us to get theta, the angle, what will we do? Inverse tangent. Inverse tangent of 11 over 75. So what do you get to the nearest, what did they say, degree? Round to the nearest degree. 8.3. 8. 8. Nearest degree, 8.64238. No, 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 nearest degree. All right. Let's try this one. Lifeguarding. A lifeguard is watching a beach from a line of sight six feet above the ground. Where is the six feet in this picture that they're talking about? Yeah, that's the idea. All the way up to their eye, there's our six feet. She sees a swimmer at an angle of depression of eight degrees. So it's always measured from the horizontal, so there's our eight degrees. How far away from the tower is the swimmer? So trying to figure out, what's this distance? X over there. Well, here's my right triangle. My eight degrees is not inside my triangle. Where's an angle inside my triangle that I know? At the person? What's at the person? That's alternate interior with this angle right over there. That is eight as well. So now I can say from the perspective of this eight inside my triangle, which ratio am I going to use? We have opposite and adjacent. Or tangent again in this situation. Tangent of what? 8 equals 6 over x. So if I want to solve for x, I first need to multiply by x. Then I need to divide by the tangent. So what do you get for to the, do they say, we'll go to the nearest foot. How far away is that swimmer? 43. 43? Yes, no? Yes. 43 feet. We figure if she gets within a foot, she can reach out and grab the hair or something. To estimate the height of a tree she wants removed, Mrs. Long cites the tree's top at a 70 degree angle of elevation. So Mrs. Long is first standing right here. I'll need to keep reading. She then steps back 10 meters and cites the top at 26 degree angle. So then she steps back over here, and she stepped back 10 meters between here and here, and it's now 26 degrees. A little hard to see. There's a 70 degrees right here, 26. That was easier to see right over there. If Mrs. Long's line of sight is 1.7 meters above the ground, so here she is, her eyeballs are exactly 1.7 meters above the ground. How tall is the tree to the nearest meter? Well, we don't have one right triangle in this little diagram. We have, we have more than one right triangle. Now, there's a right triangle right over here. Do we know how far away she was from the tree originally? No. So we are going to call it the letter Y because we're going to call X for the height of the tree. So if I set up a ratio using this little right triangle with the 70 degrees, what would that ratio be? 
I need to start with a, you're thinking correctly, but I need to start with a trig ratio, sine, cosine, tangent. Tangent of what? 70 equals x over y. That would be the ratio that came from that first little triangle. Can it be solved? No, we have two unknowns. I can't solve it with just one equation. So we need to come up with another equation. Let's work at the right triangle that includes the 26. Now, the right triangle that includes the 26 goes all the way to point B in the tree, and then up to A and back down to D. So, sine, cosine, tangent, I'm working with the 26 now. It's tangent again. Tangent of 26 would equal x over 10 plus y. That I cannot solve by itself either, but... I do have two equations now, so I can probably do some substituting from one and to another. <clears throat> Why don't we get rid of the fraction over here for just a minute? I'm going to multiply by 10 plus y times the tangent of 26 so that I have it all on one line. Oh, look at that. I know what x is. Why don't I substitute that value of x right here? Let's see what happens if we do that. Tangent of 70 must equal x, which is, and I'm going to distribute this. That tangent of 26 gets distributed. So 10 tangent 26 plus y times the tangent of 26. Need to come down a little lower. y tangent of 26. That's my x. Divided by y. Divided by y. Do we just have one variable in this one equation? Yes, we can solve this. Let's get rid of that fraction. I'm going to multiply by y so I don't have the fraction down there. Then I'm going to get the terms with y on the same side. So I'm going to move this term with y over here to the left side y tangent of 70 minus, I heard it correct, I would subtract to get rid of it since it's been added. y tangent of 26 must equal what's left on the right side? 10 times the tangent of 26. Now we remember our algebra which says, hey, I have something common that I can factor out. I could factor out the y. What would I have left if I factored out the y? Tangent of 70 minus tangent of 26. Now I am trying to solve for that y. So how could I get this y all by itself? Divide by that set of parentheses. It's y times the set of parentheses. So y must equal 10 times the tangent of 26 divided by the tangent of 70 minus the tangent of 26. Now, you're going to need to go to your calculators and do several things. You need to tell your calculator that all of this stuff is in the numerator. You need to set a parentheses around it. When you get down to that tangent, your calculator should start parentheses. You need to close parentheses after the 26. You tell the calculator, it's just the 26 that I'm taking the tangent of. And the same thing on the denominator. I'm going to need a set of parentheses around everything in the denominator so that I'm telling my calculator that's all together in the denominator. And then every time I take the tangent, there should be a set of parentheses around the only thing I'm taking the tangent of. So I want you to all try this on your calculator so that you can make your calculator get the correct answer. And if you're entering it and you don't, now's the time you need to know, not when you've done three or four problems thinking you have answers. What are you getting? 2.15? 2.16. 2.16. Now that happened to be y. If we were just smart enough to solve for x the first time, but that's all right, we solve for y. We're wanting to know the height of the tree. How tall is this tree out here? Well, we can find x right here. It says, oh, x is this, 10 plus y, so what would be 10 plus y? 12.16, 12.16, 12 
times the tangent of 26. Times the tangent of 26. That's what x is. So tell me how tall the tree is. And we'll round to the nearest foot on this one, I think. Did they say that? Oh, it's meter. It's not even in feet. Six. Does it round to six meters? To the nearest meter, we have a six meter tall tree. Two point one six. Two buildings are sighted from atop a two hundred meter skyscraper. Building A is sighted at a thirty five degree angle of depression. Building B is sighted at a thirty six degree angle of depression. How far apart are the two buildings to the nearest meter? You're going to get questions like this where you need to draw a diagram. So the first thing I see is I'm at the top of a 200 meter skyscraper. I would make your skyscrapers look like your people, look like your trees, look like everything else with a height, which is just a line. So we are looking from this perspective right here, the top of it. Here you are at this point P. Building A is sighted at a 35 degree angle of depression. Well, we know that we measure angles of elevation or depression from the horizontal. So I need a horizontal line out there, and I am going to find a building 35 degree angle of depression. So I am going to find building A right down here. So here's building A. And... It looks just like my other building. A world-famous architect designed it. As long as you're real skinny, you'll be in luck. That was supposed to be a joke. All right. Building A. Then it says building B is sighted at a 36-degree angle of depression. Uh -huh. Just barely larger with a 36-degree angle of depression is building B that I see. So, I see building B. I wonder where it is. It is sighted 36. How far apart are the two buildings to the nearest meter? Uh, what they should have said is which one was closer or farther away. So, here's our building B right in here. So, they want to know how far apart are the two buildings to the nearest meter. X. That's what we're trying to figure out. Now I'm going to go ahead and complete my triangles. I'm going to draw it right up here. So I'm going to transfer my X right to that position. There's 90 degrees right in here. I'm probably going to have to involve this length right there, so I'm going to call it a Y. Now my 35 and my 36 degrees are not inside these right triangles that I have. Alternate interior. I know this angle would be 36. We'll double that one up. I know this angle is going to be 35. So now I have my angles inside my right triangles. Oh, we can't do that triangle right there. I see the next problem with my picture. They should have described... <laughs> Let me back up. You're not looking at the top of the building. Otherwise, you're out of luck. Whoops. You are looking at the bottom of the building. There's 35. Here's our next building. So they needed to be a little more clear. There we go. That's the picture that's going on. There's our right angle. So our X has gotten a lot bigger and moved down here. And you may have to do this sometimes. You draw it out, and it's like, oh, this isn't working. Well, you need to adjust your picture. It's not working, then we'll have to figure out what does work. Now we're back to, we know this is 35. We know this is 36. We've decided to call the distance between the two buildings X, and this is going to be Y, and we have a right triangle. <coughs> so I am going to be working from the perspective of these angles. Why don't we work with that 36? What can I write? Tangent of 36 equals 200 over y, opposite over adjacent. Can I solve this one? Yeah, I can 
can solve this one. I don't have two unknowns on this one. So I would multiply by y. Whoops. Yes, I multiply by y. I divide by the tangent of 36. So tell me. Let's call it 0.3. We'll round to the nearest tenth at this point. 275.3. So I know that length. Now let's work from the perspective of the 35. What can I say from that perspective? Tangent of 35 would equal 200 over 275.3 plus x. 275.3 plus x. This one might have looked like it was going to be like our last one, but it's different because we actually could solve for that y value to start with. So if I'm going to solve for this x, I'm going to get rid of that denominator. I'm going to multiply 275.3 plus x times our tangent of 35 equals 200. I'll have to distribute that tangent of 35. 275.3 times the tangent of 35 plus x times the tangent of 35 equals our 200. Trying to solve for x, what would I do next? I need to subtract this number. That's just a number. I need to subtract that number. So I have left x times the tangent of 35 equals my 200 minus 275.3 tangent 35. Now, I want you to get into the habit, practice, of rearranging equations, not going to your calculator and trying to get little numbers and plugging those numbers in. That causes rounding error in your answers, and you get farther and farther away from the correct answer. We want to be able to rearrange the equation until we've isolated our x, and then in one step we put it in our calculator, and we only round one number instead of all these numbers. What would I do as my last step to isolate my x? Divide by the tangent of 35. This is a number. It's being multiplied by the x. So I divide to get rid of it. So this is what we want to enter in the calculator. And again, everybody should be doing this with your calculator so that you know I understand how to enter something like this. Now, can you tell me where do I need to put parentheses to enter this in in one step? I need it around the 35 because I have to tell my calculator what I'm taking the tangent of. Not done with where I need parentheses. The whole numerator. The whole numerator. Your calculator needs to understand all of this is in the numerator before it starts dividing. There it is. That's what you need. So tell me what x is. 10.3? Ten point three. Ten point three. I wonder what we were measuring in back up here. Two hundred meter skyscraper. So this would be ten point three meters apart. Are those two buildings? <laughs> Let's go to your book now. We are on page five eighty three. Is that the right number? Ten point three. Uh oh. Uh oh. Let's see. Let me find it in my book where I got that problem. This is 10.3 is the correct number. If you're not getting the 10.3, then that's why I wanted all of you to do your calculator. You need to get help a little bit later from me or from your neighbor. How am I entering it wrong? Because you're entering it wrong if you're not getting the 10.3. Let's look at page 583, number one. Five eighty three number one. And again, some of you maybe weren't doing your calculator. You need to have done it because it's easy to mess up on that. So make sure that you have done it and know I'm getting the right answer or I'm getting the wrong answer and I need to fix it. Five eighty three number one. Lenora wants to build the bike ramp show. Find the length of the base of the ramp. Okay? We need to use some sort of trig ratio. Oh. 
opposite and adjacent are the sides we're dealing with. So what a trick ratio. Tangent. When we're dealing with these application problems, tangent shows up quite often. Not always, but it shows up quite often. Tangent of what? Tangent of 20 degrees equals 10 over x, that base. So if we multiplied by x to eliminate the fraction and then divided by the tangent of 20, we would discover that we need to have a base of... 3.6. To the nearest tenth, how much? 27.5 feet. Number two. A fan is seated in the upper deck of a stadium, 200 feet away from home plate. If the angle of depression to the field is 62 degrees, at what height is the fan sitting? So we need a picture. The fan is sitting way up over here in the stadium at some height, we'll call it H. There's the fan, right there. That fan looks down towards home plate, so from the horizontal, the fan is looking down towards home plate, and somewhere way over here is home plate. So they're way out in left field. I don't know. What was the angle of depression? 62 degrees. And how far away are they? 200 feet. Now here's the deal. <laughs> I am not sure which 200 they are referring to, so we're going to have to try it out and see which 200 they are referring to. I think they are meaning this 200 feet as opposed to 200 feet line of sight from home plate. We will see in a minute. <laughs> so sometimes they're not real clear. I may have to help you if you're trying to figure out, well, where are they referring? Where can I move my 62 in my triangle? To H. To H. Alternate interior, I know this is 62 as well. So what trig ratio would I set up? Tangent of 62 would equal H over 200. So if we multiplied by 200 to eliminate our fraction, we decide, we'll see if we get the right answer. We'll have to move our 200 if we don't. Nearest tenth. How much? Anybody else? Is that what you're getting? Take your eraser, <laughs> move the 200 up here. So they did actually mean, hey, line of sight, we're 200 feet away. So that gives us a different triangle. So which trig ratio would I use now? Sine. This would fit the sine of 62 equals, I've heard some of you say opposite over hypotenuse, so it's H over 200. No, it's not the same thing. It's a different trig ratio, not the same thing. What do you get for this height now? 176. Nearest tenth. 176.6, they like that one. 176.6 feet. Number three. And this really is what they said. That's a better diagram for what they said. You're 200 feet away, line of sight from home plate. Number three. Annabelle and Rich are setting up decorations for their school math competition. That's what they meant to say there. Rich is standing five feet directly in front of Annabelle under a disco ball. If the angle of elevation from Annabelle to the ball is 40 degrees, and we can see the diagram, and Rich to the ball is 50 degrees, how high is the disco ball? On your paper, get a diagram that matches what they have given us. So they were nice on this one, and they gave us a diagram. And they were measuring from their feet for whatever reason. They're measuring from their feet, so we'll deal with it. 
that's where they're standing, I guess. Makes sense. What do we have? 40 degrees and 50 degrees, and they're five feet apart? Five feet apart. And they want to know how tall is the disco ball? X. Anything <coughs> else that I may want to label in my diagram to help me out? Right beside the five. What should we call it? What a good letter. All right. Hey, help me out. What can I say? Tangent of tangent of fifty would equal what? X over Y. Oh, this sounds familiar. I can't solve this one by itself. I need another equation. Tangent of 40 equals x over 5 plus y, or y plus 5. You can say it either way, but we better not multiply them together. We better add them together. Now, last time you saw me take this right side equation and get rid of the fraction, and then I solve for x, and I put it in. I'm going to take a different approach on this one. I am going to solve for y on this left one. So I would multiply by y. I want to show you the results of doing this. And even though this says, oh, this is what x equals, I'm going to divide by tangent of 50. Do you remember last time when we did it the other way, what was our first answer? Remember what our first answer was? Our first answer was not the height, which wasn't terrible. Our first answer, we ended up with y in our equation, and so we solved for y the first time instead of solving for x. Well, I might be a little slow, but I decided, you know what? I don't want to solve for y. I want to know what x is. So if I solve for the value of y and substitute it into the other equation, my equation will only have x's in it. And then I'll get what I want. Let's see how that idea works out. Tangent of 40 equals x over 5 <coughs> plus y. y is x over tangent of 50. Now that whole thing is just a denominator, so don't get freaked out by it just because it looks a little different. It's just a denominator. So I'm going to get rid of my fraction by multiplying by the denominator. And there are different methods we could use, but I'm going to multiply by the denominator. So I have, I'm going to give myself a little more room over here. I have 5 plus x over tangent of 50 times that tangent of 40 on the left equals my x. I multiply by the denominator, so it's on one line. I need to distribute my tangent of 40. So 5 times the tangent of 40 plus x times the tangent of 40 over the tangent of 50. equals x. All I did was distributed the tangent of 40. That's all I did on that step. We're trying to solve for x. Do you remember what I need to do now? I need to get my x terms all on one side of the equation. So what would I do to do that? Subtract this x term. So 5 times the tangent of 40 equals, I already had an x there, minus x times the tangent of 40 over the tangent of 50. I got my x terms all by themselves on one side of the equation. How about the next thing we did? Do you remember what I did next? We're trying to solve for x. <laughs> Factor out the x. It's common. I need to factor out the x. 
I factored out the x from x. What do I have left? 1. x times 1 is x. Minus, how about the second term? What do I have left? Tangent 40 over tangent 50. On the left side, I still have 5 times the tangent of 40. I factored out my x. I'm going to make a little note up here. What did I do at this location? I need to get x terms on the same side. And the reason I'm wanting to get the x terms on the same side is so that I can factor out the x. That's what we did at that location. I want x by itself. What do I do? Divide. It's x times a set of parentheses. So I just need to divide by that set of parentheses. 5 times the tangent of 40 divided by parentheses 1 minus the tangent of 40 over the tangent of 50. That will equal our x. So let's put our parentheses in. I know I need parentheses around everything I'm taking the tangent of, or if I was taking the sine or cosine, always have to have parentheses there. Anywhere else where I'd need parentheses. Numerator. Well, actually, in this case, I wouldn't because it's just one thing, but that's okay. And we already have the ones around everything in the denominator. Everybody, try this on your calculator. You need to know, am I doing it right when I'm entering it in my calculator? What did you get? You should be getting the number 14.2. This was measured in feet. You have two examples. Earlier, the example from the book that I did one way, I solved the right side of the equation is what I did and substitute it into the left. This one, I did it the other way. Substituted for the other variable, substituted it in the right. Either way work. Both ways will get you the correct answer. So you have two excellent examples of how to do these problems, which are the most fun problems. Your assignment from page 583. You have numbers 1 through 15. See, just 15 problems. Just. They're not all of those, no. 